She is known for being an American ornithologist and an expert on Asian birds. She is recognized for her extensive research on South American seabirds and fossil birds from North America, as well as her specialization in Asian birds. Her name is Pamela C. Rasmussen. In the world of ornithology, one name stands out, Pamela Cecile Rasmussen, an American expert on Asian birds. With a background as a research associate at the Smithsonian Institution and currently based at Michigan State University, Rasmussen has made significant contributions to the field of avian research. Her journey began with the study of South American seabirds and fossil birds from North America, but it was her specialization in Asian birds that truly set her apart. Rasmussen's work involved describing new bird species and clarifying the status of others, particularly white eyes and owls. Her expertise in Asian birds led her to collaborate with major research centers in the United States and the United Kingdom. However, her contributions extend beyond taxonomy and species identification. One of Rasmussen's most notable achievements was her role as the main author of Birds of South Asia, The Ripley Guide. This groundbreaking publication provided comprehensive coverage of the region's avian biodiversity, surpassing its predecessors in geographical and species representation. During her research for the book, Rasmussen uncovered a shocking revelation about eminent British ornithologist Richard Meinertshagen. Through her meticulous examination of museum bird specimens, Rasmussen exposed the extent of theft from museums and fraudulent documentation perpetrated by Meinertshagen. Her efforts shed light on an unfortunate chapter in ornithological history, emphasizing the importance of accuracy and integrity in scientific research. Pamela Cecile Rasmussen's work in the field of ornithology has not only expanded our understanding of Asian birds but has also exposed the need for transparency and honesty in scientific endeavors. Her contributions to the study of avian biodiversity and her dedication to uncovering the truth serve as an inspiration for future generations of ornithologists. In 1992, Pamela took on the role of assistant to S. Dylan Ripley, a former secretary of the Smithsonian. Ripley had plans to create a comprehensive guide to the birds of South Asia. However, when Ripley fell ill shortly after starting the project, Pamela stepped in to take over. Alongside artist John C. Anderton, they produced Birds of South Asia, The Ripley Guide, a two-volume bird guide specifically for the Indian subcontinent. This groundbreaking guide was the first of its kind for the region to include sonograms, providing a new way to identify bird species. Volume 1 of the guide featured over 3,400 illustrations in 180 plates and more than 1450 color maps. Volume 2 provided detailed information on specimen measurements, identification, status, distribution, and habits. The book also included descriptions of vocalizations based on recordings, with over 1,000 sonograms. Covering a remarkable 1508 species, including hypothetical and possible species, the guide encompassed India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Nepal, Bhutan, Maldives, the Chagas Archipelago, and even Afghanistan. What set Birds of South Asia apart was its extensive use of museum specimens for distribution information and its taxonomic approach, which involved splitting a large number of species. The guide also expanded the geographical range, notably by including Afghanistan. While the birding and ornithological press generally praised the guide, it was not without its critics. Some reviewers, like Asian bird expert Peter Kennerley, found fault with certain illustrations, considering them small, garish, or technically inaccurate. Kennerley also raised concerns about the reliance on old museum specimens and the dismissal of observational data from birders in the field. He felt that some taxonomic decisions seemed arbitrary and lacked support from published research. The production of birds of South Asia faced several challenges, including the loss of the main map database during a trip to Burma and poorly prepared specimen skins. There were also difficulties in reconciling different sources, delays in creating illustrations and maps, and obtaining reliable data for difficult areas such as Assam, Arunachal Pradesh, Bangladesh, and Afghanistan. The unique avifaunas of the Andaman and Nicobar Islands also posed challenges regarding their status and taxonomy. In a 2005 paper, Pamela examined the conservation implications of the revised taxonomy in the guide, which involved numerous species splits. She concluded that while there were some conservation implications, the impact on species richness in South Asia was limited, resulting in only a moderate increase in the number of potentially threatened species in the region. Do you want to explore more scientists? Who do you want to see featured next? Subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know. I'll see you in the next video.